check this out. This is the Vespid Cyber Prime. These are specially designed cinema lenses from DZ Optics to work with LiDAR autofocusing. Autofocus with cinema lenses. So the Vespid Cyber Primes by DZ Optics connect to the focus motor of the RS3 Pro and through the metadata tell the LiDAR unit what the field of view is and the focus curve. Now this allows the user to swap any of the three lenses in the set without ever having to train the LiDAR unit and without ever having to select a lens profile. It's done automatically. And action. Now what I wanna know in this episode is, are these lenses worth it? And do they give better, more accurate autofocus results with the RS3 Pro than with regular cinema lenses without this function? Totally saved it, my man, my man. The Vespid Cyber Primes currently only come in three focal lengths, the 35, the 50, and the 75. You can buy them individually, or you can get them in this three lens kit. Now these are upgraded and rehoused copies of their very affordable and beautiful Vespid Prime kit, but with a premium cost added to the Cyber version. And from the looks of the case with the two empty compartments, I'd say they're working on two more focal lengths for the future. And since LiDAR technology really only works for field of views under 100 millimeters, my guess would be the 16 and 25 would be the next additions, but who knows. Inside the case, you have both PL and EF mounting options. They include three sets of shims, three sets of cables, and the screws and tools needed for bayonet swapping and shimming. Currently, the only system you can get any benefit from these cyber lenses is the RS3 Pro equipped with the LiDAR autofocus unit. It doesn't work with the RS2 and it doesn't work with the 3D focus. It works with the newest LiDAR autofocus and the RS3 Pro. It doesn't work with any other systems, but I'm told that could change. Why not just use an autofocus lens? I guess if you're shooting on Blackmagic or a RED or an Arri Alexa Mini and you want some cinema glass, so this is a regular stills lens. Still camera lenses aren't really concerned with focused breathing where cinema lenses are. Still lenses are marked in f-stops and they don't really care about light transmission where cinema glass is marked in t-stops and you have a set of lenses, those t-stops are gonna correspond to the exact same amount of light all the way through the set. So you can swap lenses and you know exactly the exposure should more or less stay the same. All right, so here's the deal. DZO was never on my radar and then I saw Gerald's video of the Vespid Primes that he reviewed last year. Today we're gonna to be looking at some full frame Cine Primes that might just offer the best value for the money. These are the same exact lenses just rehoused with the cyber port. So full disclosure, they gave me this set of lenses. They gave me this set of lenses on two conditions. Number one, I gotta make something cool with it. And number two, I can't sell them or give them away. Challenge accepted. They get zero input on my review. And if there's issues with the lenses, I'm gonna tell you guys about them. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna recuse myself from giving my personal review of the optics. These lenses are fantastic. And we'll let Gerald do all of the work. Take it away, Gerald. Hit it. Today we're gonna be looking at some full frame Cine, 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 Cine Primes that might just offer the best value for the money. That, 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 easy old film. All of these lenses have solid metal construction with great tolerances and a satisfying balance. They're designed to be lightweight and focus breathing is extremely well controlled. Saying again. And the witness marks are crisp and easy to read. I think these have a nice design and they have a bit of that vintage feel which remind me a little bit of some of the older Cook lenses. Such a cool value. Overall, I'm impressed by them physically. Impressed by them physically. And in some respects are better than the zines which cost $500 more. They kind of feel like a slightly softer version of the Sigma Cine lenses, but at less than half the price. So value-wise, I think they're doing quite well. And one thing I was quite pleased with is the minimal longitudinal chromatic aberration. Shut your dirty mouth. These are punching well above their weight in this aspect and show an advantage here over the lenses from Rokinon or Samyang. I'm impressed by them physically. Color reproduction on these lenses is excellent and very neutral. And most importantly, extremely consistent across the different focal lengths. And the light transmission is consistent too, so you have no problems changing lenses within this set for coverage. 
They don't suffer as badly from a lot of ghosting or spectral glare, but they do quickly lose contrast across the majority of the frame when light hits the lens. For some shooters, this might be a look they'll enjoy, giving a more vintage, dreamy feeling. They're so satisfying. All right, well, is that light flickering? Has that light been flickering the whole time? Damn. Damn, that's distracting. Maybe I can change the shutter angle. Guys, I cherry picked the best parts of Gerald's review, so please don't take that at all seriously. If you guys are interested in these lenses, really in the optics, you should take a look at the whole review because he goes into the good stuff and the bad stuff, including things like the transverse chromatic aberrations in the corners, as well as the misshapen bokeh, things that I don't really care too much about. Gerald was real excited about the optics of the lenses because of the price point. These lenses are priced above those prime lenses. There's an additional cost for these to be fitted at the Cyberport. Even though optically they're identical, they're now no longer priced in the same categories. So if optically these are the same lenses, what's the real benefit of the Cyber Prime version? For normal lenses, setting them up with LiDAR can be a pain. First, you have to create a new memory. Then you have to enter the focal length. The RS3 will perform a hard stop calibration. Then you move to position one, one meter away. Now I'm using a blank white wall, zooming into that, making sure it's perfect. Then once that's programmed, you move to the second focal point at four meters. Repeat the same process, yada, yada. Then it's set. Now with the Cyber Primes, you plug in the cable to the back of the motor, tap the function button twice, and it starts that same hard stop calibration, and then you're done. DJI totally included a new port in the back of the motor and they told nobody, including me, and then I gotta figure it out this way. USB-C plugs in like normal, and then this one plugs in right behind it, and it's done. You don't have to calibrate it, it just automatically connects on the back here. So when I got these lenses, I was hoping that the autofocus would be more accurate, but after some testing, I realized that there's no difference. In fact, the accuracy of the autofocus system is solely on the LiDAR autofocusing and some parameters. A real quick test, we can simply just unplug this and we'll go back and we'll recalibrate the lens now. Okay, so now this is just fully manually calibrated as if I never used the cable at all. This is the same quality that you would get with any other manual lens. And we're just testing to see if it's any more, more or less accurate. From my tests earlier, I didn't find any difference at all, but we'll go ahead and plug this back in and see if there's much change. Okay, now the interesting thing is once it's plugged in, it automatically detects it. So here's the tricky thing. There's room for error when you use this cable system. If the flange distance and the sensor plane of the LiDAR autofocusing isn't measured and calibrated correctly, your numbers could be off. There is that one issue. I've had several tests in the past where it was off. If you go down this path, if you get these lenses, you have to understand that you need to measure this distance to the sensor plane perfectly. If you don't, the calculations that they make on the back end with this cable are going to be off. So it's very easy to measure. You just get, you know, a little micrometer. Yeah, I just use one of these. So from sensor plane, it's about 70 millimeters. For my Sony a7S III and my FX3, both of them were 69 millimeters. So on the back here, I'm able to input that data and that's the only thing you need to change. And it's good, you can use any of the three lenses, you don't have to calibrate, the math is correct. If you have a speed booster, like I have on here, is enough to throw it off. It, you have no idea how long it took me to figure that one out. So frankly, we're at the whim of the newer LiDAR autofocusing system from DJI. There's a couple of tips and tricks that'll make it work better. One of them is just film a subject without any other subjects around, make sure that subject is away from a wall, and then the other one is to use the tracking because the tracking is telling it where to set the 
uh, autofocus exactly and the camera is moving so you can't really go out of that box it's just tracking along and when you do that the autofocusing works great regardless of the lens. DZO is making an interesting choice putting these great lenses now with some electronic features inside. I don't think the LiDAR technology is where it needs to be in order for this to replace a first AC or an autofocus system like Canon dual pixel or Sony phase detection. But I do think that there is another area where this is helpful. How's it looking? Am I in focus? Am I out of focus? Let's change the sensitivity here because this thing is going a little crazy. We'll go to sensitivity four. There we go. All right, so how's the autofocus now? Maybe it's not so... Unfortunately, if you were getting these lenses hoping that the autofocus, the accuracy and the speed would be improved, the only benefit of these lenses with the system is that you can quickly swap lenses. You don't have to do any calibration. And also the lenses weigh the same, so you don't really have to balance the gimbal. So the speed of working with them on set is really the benefit. Keep in mind, manual lenses can only be stored to one of three memory spots on the RS3. If you try to use more than three lenses, you have to delete and then reteach the lighter autofocusing points to each of those lenses but the cyber primes don't use any memory spots. Now that we know that, let's go shoot something. Let's go on set and go film something. I'm doing a shoot this Monday in Louisville, Kentucky. Check out the location that we're filming. It's an abandoned paint factory. This will be like a meet and greet kind of workshop. And just like that, I put out a blast on my socials, trying to drum up some help and make a few friends in the Midwest. <laughs> the best. I'm not gonna remember everyone's name, but I'm gonna try. Now, Alan, who manages Hype Studios in Louisville, Kentucky, not only hooked us up with the best locations in the warehouse, but also donated his time and expertise in gaffing. And he has a ton of lighting equipment. As far as story-wise, I really don't know what's gonna happen yet. So if you guys have any ideas, totally open suggestions. So right away, I wanted to mess with the autofocus with tracking and to see how it holds up with dynamic movement. The guy just split from you. So we're already starting on the chase. Now this is normally the type of movement that can be challenging for a first AC. Moving quickly without marks, you're pulling focus by hand and it definitely takes some talent, but very easy with a normal autofocus system. And the results were what I was expecting. As long as the subject wasn't moving super fast, the autofocus, even wide open at T2.1, was responsive and accurate enough to keep the actor's face in focus for 95% of the time. Things out here that the autofocus favors, like, Plant life, plants naturally reflect IR. So like the autofocus just wants to immediately go to the plants in the background. I program this mode switch to toggle it on and off. And if I need to adjust, I just adjust it like that. See, and now turn it back on. Now by far the best thing about this episode was this last minute workshop. Now I call it a workshop, but it was an opportunity to meet some new friends. You know, as a YouTuber, it's often a one-way relationship where watching my videos, you can learn all about me. And when we finally do meet in real life, I have to rapidly learn everything about you. But regardless of that challenge, it's always, always the same feeling. Like picking up a conversation with a long lost friend. All right. Oh. <laughs> Did you get the shot? <laughs> My God, are you all right? And I was like, oh, what's happening here? And then I see him like sprawled out. So totally safe. My man. My stars. Oh uh, yeah. Focus. No, it's pronounced fuck us. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, kill my brain. <laughs> Is this your brand? I'm one Just, of the co-owners. Oh, it is yeah. your you it's good shit. Yeah. This, uh, this is really actually pretty good. Weird. This is uh it's, it's basically a caffeinated uh, soda water with some uh, amino acids in there, so it gives you everything you need. This might be perfect for like set life. What I liked most about the lenses was how quickly we were able to move. We must have knocked out 37 different setups in about four hours. This is the speed in which I'm used to working with normal autofocus lenses. 
When it comes to focusing on faces, the system works very well when you know how to use it. But it struggles when trying to film objects with a low surface area, like when Talent pulled out his gun. For this shot, we decided it was best to switch over to the first AC focus polar using the DJI transmission system. I think for this shot, we're gonna switch to polling focus. Can't use the LiDAR autofocus and the DJI transmitter at the same time. So for this one, we're gonna disconnect the LiDAR in the same port. We're gonna plug in the transmitter and then we get full gimbal control and we can also pull focus. Now this proved to be a good test. Could we tell the difference between the shots that were pulled focus on versus LiDAR autofocus? Too much balance. I think stairwell scenes are just a little too tricky for autofocus. I mean, I would be struggling even with the, uh, even with the Sony system. Who wants to be a camera operator? Yeah. You want to do it? Yeah. You're going to be like this and tracking him in this way. We're going to go through this way and then we'll cheat. Uh, we'll do the op we'll do the reverse of him coming through here because I want to get this light flickering off. So even though this episode is about the lenses, we can't help but talk about the autofocusing system because how well that performs Action. dictates how well the lenses perform. You hear something above? There was nothing. There was nothing. One advantage of LiDAR is that it works well in the dark. In fact, it works better than our human eyes can see. This last section of the shoot was my absolute favorite. As I was filming it, I could literally hear Gerald's auto-tuned voice in my head. Popping in the sweater already. Mild spaghetti. For some shoes, this might be a look they'll enjoy, giving a more vintage, dreamy feeling. Not the head. Not the head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're still playing? No. Man, I promise you, we're playing tomorrow. I won't get you this. Body shots. Body shots. Personally, my overall thoughts of the lenses are they are beautiful, well made, and work as well as they should with the current LiDAR technology. I think the optics of the Vespid Primes make them a steal when sold in the normal Prime set, but the increased cost of these Cyber Prime versions make it a less clear choice. Yes, they work as well as they should, but we're still at the whim of DJI and the LiDAR tech to make them better. I saw on the DZO website that these lenses integrate with virtual productions, but when I reached out regarding this, they declined to give any information on how perhaps that's still under wraps. So one thing's for sure, if these lenses are to have much of a shelf life, they will have to be optimized to work with other systems. We can't just rely on DJI and the RS3 Pro. Who knows, maybe that's the future of filmmaking. Maybe cinema lenses in the future will all be outfitted with some sort of metadata port so that you can have a complete set of cinema lenses that can work with virtual productions, with autofocus systems, with handheld LiDAR autofocus systems. It's kind of exciting, and I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. So my hat off to DZO. I can't wait to see what they come up with next. They are making some very interesting choices. They are now on my radar. Special thanks to Alan at Hype Studios and all of those who showed up to the workshop. Guys, have a happy new year. I will see you in 2023. Yeah, Austin okay. bought my pocket 4K off a of gear focus. It made its way back. Let me see this thing. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Hell yeah. See, this helped me shoot my first short film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. Send me the short film. I want to see it. Now. All right, yeah. <laughs>